the Lord Jesus, he says he's going to come at a time that nobody knows, not even him. So we really need to be ready, don't we? Really need to be at the ready, everything sorted. You know, like when someone dies and and they have property or land or monies or cars. Brother Shadrach, when you're ready. Um, they sort all that and everything's sorted. They, 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 they call it a will. And uh, it should be our will that everything is sorted. It should be our will, our desire that everything's nice. And it's all right for the groom, ready for the groom. Because he's going to come like a lightning bolt. I believe faster from the east to the west. Like a bird upon its prey even. So we really need to be ready. Uh, today's the 21st of the 12th. 2014 and we're just about on top of the Santee season just about ready to for the big red to come on the sleigh and uh, they're slaying many out there with their lies and heresy and I get I do get arguments trying to justify the day and you know trying to put me down as a Les Miserable or, you know, a um, Ebenezer. <laughs> but uh, oh, I believe the Ebenezers are those who give once a year. I mean, I'm into giving every day. It's not a day that goes by I don't give. They're the Ebenezers. They do it once a year. Hello, hell... Oh, hey, they're the Ebenezers. The old devil, he tries to turn it all around, doesn't he? Hey, he tries to make a, a, an exclusive message, an exclusive kingdom, inclusive. Like Mr. Brian Houston of Hellsong, I mean Hillsong. I was saying this morning on the TV in his Christmas message, he said, what happened this time of the year? What was, what was born on that day? And I'm thinking, what was born on that day? Is he talking about what the pagans say? Christmas Day. You know, Jesus was born on Christmas Day. Meaning there's a Christmas Day before Jesus. And he was born on Christmas Day. Hark, the fallen angels sing. Hey? A child's been born on Christmas Day. I was born on the 15th of June. But there was always a 15th of June before I was born. Uh, Jesus was born on Christmas Day. Hark the fallen angels sing. Hey? So he was doing the Brian, rock and roll Brian was doing the come ye, come all ye faithful. And he was talking of his everyone and inclusive inclusively everyone but as the Holy Ghost magnifies the scripts to us it's not necessarily everyone but whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord they will be saved and being saved is not the answer it's not the end is it it's only the beginning because then we're being saved. I'm being saved at the moment from me. 
it's in self sight and the rot to come and hell fire. And then you have salvation to the uttermost. Which Romans eleven twenty to twenty two says if if we continue Paul writes to Timothy and says I think it's two Timothy two twelve thereabouts if we deny him, he'll deny us. If we continue on, we can be saved to the uttermost. And uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few choose God, don't they? So a lot of things involved in this very simple message and the confirmation of that comes with Ephesians 4.11 which says he gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers and evangelists no priests or nuns to all popes to uh, all Bible deans to his church to his wife that the gifted, gifted apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists can educate, can teach and equip the church, the local church, that they may go out demonstrating their faith, go out into the world and proclaim the praises of him who took them out of the darkness and the mire of sin and brought them into his glorious light and way which is his doctrine his teaching a doctrine is a way Jesus said I am the doctrine you know he said Jesus said, I, my doctrine is the way. A doctrine will lead you in a direction. The Islamic doctrine will lead you in a direction. The Quran talk about living by the sword and dying by the sword. We, as followers of Yahweh, have a different sword. Ours is the sword of the Spirit. The word of God. That's our sword. That's our acts. That's our our weapon. How this is how we disarm principalities and powers of darkness. Even they when they're moving through humans and guys were going to tear me to pieces, you know, and they said, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." I draw the sword and give them the word of God and they would take a step back and think twice. So <clears throat> let me say that Brian Houston said this morning and, and, and many Pentecostals and Evangelicals and Roman Catholics and they all use the scripture in an abusive way. But Paul said, who can separate us from the love of God? Well, I'm going to tell you, no one except you. They don't want to add that in. They don't want to uh, 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 elaborate. They don't want to um, expound upon what's really there. Because then you can take it any way you want, and that's one of their teachings. You know, you just whatever you read, you take your 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 your, your cut on that. But that's not what the scriptures say. We need to tell the people what it means. 
because they don't know. And they're going to take their own cut and they're going to be wrong. And how many millions have got John 3.16 wrong? Well, Brian Houston has got it totally wrong because the gospel is exclusive. Totally. It excludes sinners who will not repent. The blessing of the gospel excludes all male and female sinners who will not repent. Can someone say amen? So, in saying that, we separate ourselves from the blessing of God. When we don't separate ourselves from what the Lord says to separate ourselves from. Come out from among them. Does that sound inclusive? Come out from among them. And the, the logical thing to do next, not even spiritual, find out who them are. Isn't it? Luke 24, 47. Repent and be forgiven. What if they don't repent? Are they included in the blessing? Are, 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 they, are they written down in the book of life, in the Lamb's book of life? Or are they excluded? I would dare say excluded. So we need to get it right, don't we? <clears throat> There's still a lot of murmuring going on about the satanic shake, man Monas, who was killed and killed others along the way. And they're still exalting the manager of the Lint coffee shop. But now the, the news tells us, I'm only repeating what the news says, that the one that the people are praising was a sodomite. And he had a boyfriend. And this is what the news tells us. And the boyfriend of Mr. Johnson was on there, praising Mr. Johnson. And then I listened to the news again and there was a Muslim speaking at a mixed vigil. I'm not really sure, but I think it was a uh, Roman Catholic church. Don't quote me on that, but the Muslim cleric said, well, he actually asked, he said, may God Almighty bless Mr. Johnson. Tory Johnson. Now look, I, I thought these Muslims were holy people. I thought they were about holiness. I, I didn't understand that a, a supposed church of the Christ would allow that to be said in the pulpit. Because we, we know the record by the Bible. What the Lord God Almighty done, Yahweh done, Jesus to the sodomite homosexual cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Look, you, you may ask the question, and people listening may ask the question, why am I saying this? Well, it's that you will see what you're amongst and in the midst of them. And, and it's so that you will even cherish more the truth, forward slash, the Christ. That you can see, you have eyes to see and ears to hear. You're not deaf, blind, dumb and mute to the realities of righteousness and the God of righteousness, sister. Sister, yes. You know what I mean? Hey? Come all ye faithful. And all and everyone sings it. It's all inclusive, isn't it? 
But Jesus tell you, tells us there's very few who are faithful. If you find the narrow gate, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be prior to the coming of the Son of Man upon the clouds with a shout and a voice. When archangel and the trumpet of God will sound the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are on the earth and who are alive and have a living relationship with the Christ happening, they will be then, secondly, caught up into the air to be with those who have been taken out of the graves who are faithful to the Lord and acceptable and found and counted worthy on that day. Can someone say amen? You can say oh my or why, but I'm not going to say, or you might want to say hallelujah, but I'm going to say amen. Yeah? So... <clears throat> leaves a lot of question marks, doesn't it, where our society is. But Jesus did say, I send you out. That's what he talks to, that's what he says to disciples. Are we disciples of Jesus? I tell you what, we've got to raise the bar. We really have to raise the bar in uh, 2.15. Are we his disciples? Well, he said, I send you out. I mean, and this may sound mean and callous to the carnal mind. I send thee out as sheep among wolves and as lambs among savage wolves. Now that sounds hard, callous, mean to the carnal mind and those who think they have more love than love itself or the God of love or Jesus. God is love. He doesn't have a portion of it. <laughs> he is love. And now I know it sounds terrible, doesn't it? We have to observe. We have to listen with our, our heart and look with our ears. Hey? Right? So that we're not to see. Beware. Beware. That men do not deceive you. Men and women. Beware that they don't deceive. Oh, what? You know. we got all these we are the world people saying. Oh, they wouldn't do that to me. I mean, hello. Get in the real world, you know. Yes, I'm so encouraged, I'm so happy, but I don't like to use the word happy because it's not enough. It's not enough for what's happening deep down within. Hey? As I drive my children to school and my wife and children are singing as we drive down the road, after we've heard the word, I've got joy down in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. J-O-Y, down in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. Jesus, give it to me. I say rejoice, rejoice. I can see... Uh, Brother Shadrach in the front there going, Rejoice! And the Hannah in the back, Rejoice! Rejoice! Because they got joy down in their hearts. No! No, my children have never been to Sunday school. <laughs> They've been to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday school. See? It's a life of living and learning, isn't it? Dialing. So it's a new and living way. Walking in it. Hey? So we live and we learn. And, and they were boasting on the on the news about a bicycle rider who was travelling down a hill at fifty K, fifty kilometers, and a deer came out of the bush and he hit the deer. As it crossed the road, and I thought, well, yeah, okay, keep going. And there was nothing else said. But 
they did say that there was one million hits on that video within 48 hours. Like, hello. Okay. <laughs> one million hits in 48 hours. I'm getting a little less than that on my vids on Facebook and YouTube. 48 hours. Tells you something. Doesn't that tell you something? Doesn't that tell you what the people want? Doesn't that tell you? <laughs> it's all about happy, isn't it? The seventh to war. Is it? No, the fifth. <coughs> it's all about happy. The world is all about happy. But I tell you what, happy is not good enough. It's just not big enough to express how I feel. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and all that I have and all that I'll ever be, I give the glory to Jesus. To God be the glory. Let's open our Bibles at 1 Thessalonians 2, please. 1 Thessalonians 2. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things he has done. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you. I tell you, there's a lot in there. There is a lot in there. there that is a, it, it, it is a, a spiritual smorgasbord there alone carvery for this reason we thank God without ceasing because see the first thing that happened when you received the word thank you for that which you heard from us Paul speaking you welcomed it they received it they well come on in Come on in. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles I give. They still happen now and then. Step into my home and leave your kids behind. Welcome to my world. Built with you in mind. Knock and the door will open. Seek and you will find. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing. Without ceasing. Without ceasing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank you, thank you, Lord, saving me. I, thank you for today, Father. Father, we thank you for today. I want to thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Well, once I was lost, but... Now I'm found, now my soul is glory bound. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing. Not just at Sandy season. But the Sandy season people, that's all they do. Why? Because they're ignorant, number one. Number two, because they're Ebenezer. Number three, because they love money. Number four, because... They love each other and their family more than they love Jesus. Where are we going? Number five? I haven't got to there yet. I'll get that one next time. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it off. Once you come on in, not as the word of men. Even though we welcome the word, sometimes it's... Ah! 
It's sometimes when we work with the word we welcome it, but still it's He's killing me softly with his love, killing me softly with his word, tell my own life. Not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. Many receive the word of God, they welcome it, but not in truth. Full counsel, not just the, the good bit, not just the John 3.16 and Psalm 23, Lord is my shepherd, I have no one. No, as it was, as, as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively, here it is. I said all that, this, this is what I really want to say. That effectively works in you, who, everyone, inclusively, not. The word of God will only ever work in you and bring effect effectively when you believe what does believe mean when you do it it's not going to work and didn't work for me mate you didn't do it oh, I'm trying my best you're not doing the word you are still in the picture Fred you're not doing what Jesus says. You're not doing the word. Do what Jesus says and the, the, it'll take effect. You know, like the old uh, Panadol. You read on the pack. Takes effect in 32 minutes. And we believe it, don't we? Oh, I believe it. Hey, my headache's gone. It only takes effect on the hearts of the people who walk ye in it. Amen? I think we better go in <coughs> to the word. But just before we do, there was two armies fighting. I've seen this on the television. I don't know much about the historical. I'm not really historically uh, healed. You know, historically, yuck. I'm a now man. Now's the time of salvation. But apparently there was two armies. One was German and the other one might have been French or English. Anyway, they had a smoke over. They thought we'll have tea break and we'll have a game of soccer or something. So it could very well be England. They're soccer people. This is in the sandy season. This is the, one of the promotions they use to gather more money and gather the one world church and the one world government everyone coming together in, in a satanic unity <laughs> satanic unity is based on lies messianic unity is based on the love that is found buried in the truth. In the trenches called truth. Because eh? <laughs> they did not receive the love of the truth. Because not, Yahweh sent them strong delusion. And a strong delusion is a delusion that you don't even know you're deluded. A strong, the scripture goes on to say that God sent him strong delusion. So the strongest delusion is that they would believe the lie. And who is the liar? Satan. Christmas is a lie. It's not in the Bible. Easter is a lie. It's not in the Bible. Jesus' birth is in the Bible. Jesus' death, burial and resurrection is in the Bible. But neither of them 
are seasonal. They're daily. And to say they're seasonal is to cut across established canon. We care about the dying of the Christ in us daily. And Peter said, those who have ceased and died to their sin suffer in the flesh. It's not comfortable. Tell us, well, surely put to death and buried, eh? So, yeah, these soldiers, they had a break at Christmas time and put their weapons down played soccer, then they got back into it again. Well, I never read of Paul the Apostle um, ceasing from preaching the truth for the sake of a festival or a season or a birthday. I mean, most people rather keep things shallow, you know. But I'm into the deep. I like to go deep to deep. God speaks deep to deep. Most people like the shallows, you know. But you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to grow, go or glow. You're going to have that matte finish on your face. You know, <laughs> you, know <laughs> you won't have that full glass finish. <laughs> With the spray, the biblical spray. That, <laughs> that Esther Paul look. You won't have that, it'll always be that matte finish, yeah. You know? I'm a Christian. You won't have that. Ha! Ah! Look on your face, you know, you won't have that. <laughs> Drawing people from other sides of the street. I've only got a smile, you know. And they come from across the road. They want to know what's going on. What do you want? Standing on the rock. Jesus. They want to know what's happening. How come you're so happy? You haven't even bought a plum pudding. You haven't even bought one Christmas card. You bought no one another. Exactly. I bring the gospel to you, my friend. Which is far great. And I mean... I mean, the truth that is in the word. <laughs> Will you receive it and welcome it? Woo! Because you can become an infinite heir. I'm not in the business of tinkering around the outskirts. I like the big stuff, big kahunas. Infinite heir, none of this millionaire stuff. That's nothing to me. I've got no interest in spending all my time wasting all my time becoming a millionaire and then you get a million and, it's, and then it's all gone w within five years or whatever one scungy business deal and it's all taken from you whatever i want the infinite air thing happening you know <laughs> you can have your millionaire and trillionaire or you gave away 10 million dollars won't save your soul friend you can give your back to be whipped it won't save your soul Jesus paid the price and we collect the dividends by doing what he sends. Someone say amen. You can say my wife. That's up to you. Hey? Let's go into our message today. We're going to be reading out of <coughs> the New Testament today in the writings of the beloved. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to start reading in verse 18. Hallelujah. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? You know when a woman is in love with a man or when a man loves a woman oh I'll tell you now. You know when that sort of thing nah is happening it's sort of like it doesn't really matter about the decor or the car or anything like that that's this doesn't come into play does it 
Well, that's the same thing with Jesus. When a man loves Messiah, he don't really care about a thing I have. He's just so taken away with his love. So it doesn't matter about the venue. It doesn't matter about the menu. It doesn't matter, as in the fellowship talk, uh, it doesn't matter about how many guys who will be there. It, it doesn't matter. Because that individual is in love with Jesus. Now you get a bunch of people that are in love with Jesus together, or oh, the atmosphere will be heavenly. It will be just glorious, right? 1 John 2. When a man loves Messiah. <laughs> yes. 1 John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not have went out from us. No. That they would have continued with us, but they went out. That they might be made manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy Ghost. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I have written to you because you do not know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Verse 22, 1 John 2. Who is a liar but he who denies that, the, that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Final verse is 23. Whoever denies the Son does not have Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. There's a lot in there, isn't there? Another Calvary banquet. He brought me into the banqueting house and the banner over me is love. I haven't lost that loving feeling of the Lord when I met him. I have not lost it. I have hung on to him because it's my goal with a G-O-L-D it's my everything that I have that witness I am his and he is mine and the banner over me is love 1 John 2 18 how beautiful hey right? How beautiful, no matter how old we are, the scripture reads, little children. You see the love there. I mean, children without parents and children who are troubled and adults who are trying to rewind their lives back. To try and capture something that has flown the coop. Need to know Jesus. <laughs> My daughter Hannah, sister Hannah likes that. She's smiling there. And there's a little bit for everything at the banqueting house. So there's many people out there trying to capture something that has flown the coop. But the Lord, in his wisdom, says, hey, forget it. Forget it. 
forget the past, press on to the high call, the eternal call of Yahweh through the Christ. Hey? So all of our message today is, they are not of us. They are not of us. Little children, it is the last hour and the Lord cares for us and he warns us and he shows us and he, he impresses upon our hearts and he teaches us and he guides us by his spirit, quickening us that we may acknowledge that it's the last hour, knowing that a thousand years is but a day to the Lord. So if you want to work that out on an hourly rate, you certainly won't live that long. Amen? <laughs> so, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist, the Antichrist himself, is coming, Even, but even now Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And we know that things are coming to a head. There's so many people out there. And look, it's so bad. It, it includes churches with their anti-Christ attitudes. Their anti... Well, Christ is the anointed one. And... Christ speaks of the truth. Jesus, the Christ. They're against the truth. And look, they will charge at you like wild animals if you speak the truth. And it's getting worse by the day. All kinds of laws being brought into uh, Parliament and into the country that protect sinners and sinful wives. 1 John 2.19 They went out from us. They went out from us. But they were not of us. Hey? For if they had been of us, they would have continued. I love that word. Oh, I, I love that word, continue. You know? When I was an alcoholic, an endemic man, born of a sinful woman, my mother, I, I, I love that word, continue, but it, nothing ever continued. The pub shut, the wine bar used to shut, and my so-called mates would go to sleep, and I did not like it. But I found a place where all things continue. <laughs> In the kingdom of God. For all kingdoms will fall. I don't care what kingdom it was or is. But there is a kingdom that never shuts down. <laughs> far exceeding New York City the kingdom of God now I'm right I'm at home because I'm in a place I've been placed in a kingdom that will never shut down and it will never change that the king of that kingdom is the same yesterday today and forever how many people do we have out there today that changing all the time? You, you can't trust them. I don't care if it's husband, wife. I don't care if it's friends, girlfriends, partners. That It could be just nowhere you get a text and just say, oh, I'll see you later, alligator. And not in a while, crocodile. Humanity is frail and fickle, unreliable. Cursed are they 
who trust in humanity, in men and women. But blessed are they who trust in Yahweh, in the Lord. Blessed. There's a blessed assurance. Hey? Foretaste. Divine. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We have that foretaste now. That's that, that joy, that love, that banner over us, saturating us and permeating us every minute of the day. Hey? Every minute of the day. It's glory. The people of the house of God cry out, Glory! Psalm 29, 9. They went out from us, but they were not of us. But they were with them for a season. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made men. They might be made manifest. Not... John the Beloved and Paul and Peter and them. This coincides with what Paul said in uh, Corinthians, if we go there, please. We just go to 1 Corinthians. Whoops. What well, Paul said um, Forgive me for that It's 2 Corinthians chapter 13 Verse 5 Examine yourselves as to whether you are Still in the fight Prove yourselves Do you not know yourselves That Jesus the Christ is, is in you not in a stable. He's in you. Unless indeed you have been disqualified. What? One saved, always saved. But I trust that you will know that we are. See, we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honourable, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth but for it. Remember what we just read? Same thing, John says. Scripture confirms Scripture. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Paul was saying, it's not, a, it's not us, the problem. John's saying, it's not us, the problem. They are the problem. There are people who start off with Jesus and then they go off the rails. That's why... They need to check to see whether they're still in the fight. This message is about apostasy. Ultimately, they are not of us. Hey? They are not of us. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians this time. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 6. Love does not rejoice in sin. Love rejoices in the truth. Why would they go out from the truth if they rejoiced in the truth? They didn't. They rejoiced in sin. People love sin more than they love the truth. I'll tell you that now. You say, oh yeah? That's what's just what you're saying. That's only your interpretation, Paul Sheehan. No, it's not. It's God's interpretation. 
I got it from the Holy Ghost. John 3, can we go there please? John 3, verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, and he who does not believe is condemned already. John 3, 18. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the darkness. The light has come into the world. Men and women love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. At least their deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. You see that? These people that we're looking at in 1 John, they left the truth. They wanted to go back to the darkness. But they were there. They were born again. They had met the Lord. Verse 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. A babe can know all things. What I mean by that and what the scripture is saying is up to the light you have. We, ha we, we have the Holy Ghost and we who have the Holy Ghost have no need to be convinced of the truth because the spirit we have is the spirit of truth. Now when you hear the truth, you know it's the truth. The only other way you can go is out from that. I'm amazed at people who come to this fellowship over the last 20 years and they've just gone out they know it's the truth they tell me with their own mouth but the problem is with congregations and people they want to know the pastor after the flesh and I'm not prepared to do that you know what I mean they want to hang out together and do this and, and, and you get to know each other after the flesh that is dangerous. Familiarity breeds contempt. Can you say amen? Right? That is very, very dangerous. The scriptures say we're not to know each other after the flesh. That's another good one uh, for Christmas. They, they're knowing Jesus after the flesh as a baby. We're not to know Christ after the flesh. We're to know him in the spirit. And when it's a whole nother ball game when we know Jesus in the spirit. Because when we know Jesus as a baby, it's the cuddly chubby bubby in the straw. And look, the matriarchal spirit loves it. Mums love it. And mother knows best. <laughs> they say, don't they? But when you know Jesus after the Spirit. You know him as the, the one with eyes of fire and a face like lightning. We know him as Jesus the judge. We know him as Jesus, the one that saved our miserable soul from sulfur. Molten. <laughs> and brimstone. The whole game changes, doesn't it? Hey? The whole thing changes. But there's a lot of money in keeping Jesus uh, basket bound. Hey? There's a lot of money in keeping Jesus in a crib. And there's a lot of money keeping Jesus on a cross. And there's a lot of money keeping Jesus in a tabernacle in a building. But there's no money in keeping Jesus as number one in your heart.
the suffering but rejection denial despising hatred violence exclusion and rejection can someone say amen hey it's all about apostasy this message they are not of us is the title of a message today I have not written to you because you do not know the truth I like this but because you know it and you know that no lie is of the truth and all this Christmas lies Santa Claus lies and all this uh, Mary, Mother of God, lies. All this absolute predestination, salvation by election, once saved, always saved, lies. Jesus is not of lies. Jesus has no fellowship with Belial, the liar. I have written, I have not written this to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know the truth. When I came to Jesus, I didn't know one jack of what was in the Bible. Nearly 28 years ago, when that Aboriginal spoke to me, I knew, I knew he was speaking the truth. I knew. I knew he was speaking the truth. I didn't question him. I just knew. Point blank. I didn't go looking around the Jehovah Witness. I didn't go looking around for Pentecostal this, Pentecostal that. What's this? What's that? I didn't go. No, I knew. When I was a child growing up in a convent, and then I went to a boys' private school, I knew what those priests and those Christian brothers told me regarding Jesus and Mary and the Bible. I knew it was tainted. I knew it was skew with. I knew. Let's go to verse 18. The last hour. Little children. Oh, he's so loving. It is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists have come. But... By which we know that it is the last hour. Because of the resistance towards the truth. Because people don't want to hear about judgment. Because people don't want to walk in righteousness. Anything will go and anything does and anything will do. We know the Antichrist is drawing nigh. We know... He has his ministers out there with their unrighteous doctrine, with their doctrine of don't judge, with their doctrine of it doesn't matter what you do, you're born again and you're blood washed and you've been baptised, you're already saved, you can live like a dog, you can get on the plonk, you can smoke your drugs, you can chase the whores, you can do anything and still be saved. You can prostitute your soul to other doctrines and still be saved. The scriptures don't tell us that, do they? There was a doctrine in one of the churches in the book of uh, Revelation and they were dabbling in the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Jesus very angry. The most treasured of Jesus is his doctrine. We know that he puts his word above humanity. His word even goes above his own name. Scripture says so. He's very jealous. He won't have us partaking of other teachings. Mixing, mix, 
Old man, new man mix. A, what would you say, a de facto relationship, maybe. Hey? The last hour. We know we're in the last days. We know we're in the last hour. So, the truth people stay. In the truth. We just read it from Corinthians. They rejoice. They don't just accept it. They rejoice. Oh, I loved it. Man! It's sort of like, you know, Mr. Johnson bowling a fastball and taking the wicket. And they, yeah! Well, that's what the truth is to me. Every time I see a scripture, every time I read the word, it's yay and amen. And they're all fastballs and they all take the bile and put it in the bin. And all the bile balloons. Yeah? The truth people can't stand any other way. Way? Doctrine? Any other way. They will not have it any other way. They can't stand. You know what I mean? You imagine putting on a shirt three sizes too small. It's, it's pretty annoying, isn't it? Trying to do those buttons up, you know what I mean? Hello? So what you do is just take it off and throw it down in the bin. You're that annoyed. Well, that's like lies and compromise to a man, a woman of truth. They can't stand it. Uh, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God, and he does. <laughs> he always has. From whence my help comes from? It comes from the Lord. Maker of heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen, Hosanna in the highest of places. Blessed is he who comes in the name of this one, Hosanna, Jesus, the Christ, yeah? So, they are not of us. They are not of us. Let's read it. Confirm it in 1 John 4, please. They are not of us. Apostasy. They were there, but they left. Oh, no, no, they were never really born again. I don't believe that. And we'll see it as we go along. Hey, 1 John 4, and we're going to read verses 4 to 6. 1 John 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. What? What? What is that? What's that? Boy? What? What are you? What? What are you selling? What? What the? No. What the? What? Kalubalu. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this, by this we know the spirit of truth, spirit of error. They don't have a spirit of truth. They can't hear. You know the only way I can hear the truth? When that Aboriginal came to me? The spirit. The spirit. He had the spirit of truth. The only way I can get anything to minister or teach is to ask the spirit of truth. He knows all things. 
Hey? He knows all things. He is in us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, the Christ, and you know all things. But he only releases to us as he sees fit. There were many things the disciples needed to know, but he said, you're not ready yet. When Jesus walked with his disciples, you're listening. Someone say amen. You can say, oh my, why? That's up to you. But I'm going to say hallelujah. <laughs> they are not of us. Just this, the writings of 1 John 4, 4 to 6 blows Brian Houston's rubbish teaching out the window. Totally. Us and them. Oh no, it's all inclusive. There's no us and them, you know. We're all just sinners, saved by grace. Well, if you're a sinner and you've been saved by the power of God, how could you be still a sinner? I thought you said that you were saved from sin, <laughs> from wanting to sin and from doing sin. Known sin. Doesn't seem to add up, does it? It sounds a little antichrist. It sounds a little anti truth. It sounds like they're against what Jesus is saying. That's anti. Anti Christ is anti truth. Anyway. So. The Lord Jesus says very clearly through John. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Wow. The JWs do this, don't they? They deny the deity of Jesus. They say it's just a man. They deny the power of the Christ. And what about the Roman Catholics? Do they deny Christ? Yes, they do. They deny his deity too. They deny his work at the cross. That Jesus opened the temple. And the veil in the temple was torn in two and the priesthood was rendered obsolete and now we come as kings and priests to Father in the name of Jesus. The door of faith has been opened to the Gentiles and Jews alike on faith and obedience and he gives us faith that we may obey a measure even. Can someone say Amen. So the JWs deny they're in the Antichrist field. I know that for certain because the run-ins I've had with JWs is just satanic. Women swearing like mouths like sewers cursing me in the street because I'm preaching Jesus as God and Saviour. <laughs> I had only recently some Samoan JW is going to report me for speaking the truth. We'll report you. I said, oh, go on, you big girl. Go on. You go and report. Tell your auntie too. Go on. Big wusser. Hey? And who else have we got? What about the evangelicals? And the Automatics and Instamatics, the Pentecostals, they deny the Lord too. And uh, the Orthodox mainstream churches, who are all inclusive in the One World Church, ultimately deny 
Jesus and deny the crimes of being Lord. Because they still go on in their sin. Saying you can never be free of sin, known sin. Well, that's being Lord. And there is no really no testament without the one who is testifying dies. That's when the message hits the bullseye. When we die off and we allow the word to slay our carnal lives and our sin-loving lives and the new man springs forth like clear shining after rain, like the sun rising in the morning on a cloudless, cloudless day. <laughs> hey? Clear shining after rain. Ooh, yes, fresh and crisp and clear. This is the born again from above experience, fresh and revitalized and revived and seated in heavenly places with him. Yeah? So, verse 22 says that he is Antichrist who denies Father, Jesus. And there's a base, basic denial going on in lion's share of majority of churches. We can find that in the writings of uh, John, if we go to John 14. John 14 says in verse... 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Jesus speaking. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments, keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will then be loved by Father. And I will love him. And manifest myself to him verse 23 let's read verse 22 Judas not Iscariot said to him Lord how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world what does Jesus say if anyone loves me he will keep my word and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. And when Father and Jesus have made their home in you, you are full to the brim. You are complete in all things. You are a, a person who is full of goodly works, fully furnished unit lacking nothing in him we are complete the head of all principalities and powers the Lord as it says in John 14 Judas said how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world. The world will never know that. The world will never know Father. The world will never know Jesus. Because they don't want to do what he says. The light shone in the darkness. The darkness could not comprehend. Because God looks at the heart when the word is spoken. And if we receive it and we welcome it and we walk in it. He will then bless that. He will put his blessing on that. 
It will be like oil running down the beard of Aaron onto his garments. Hey? There will be that fresh anointing. Hey? You will say, my cup is full and running over. My cup is full and running over. The blessing will be there. Hey? The blessing will be there. Also, let's turn to Luke 8.21. We just read, those who deny the Lord, those who deny the Christ, they do not get anything. There's obedience involved here, Luke 8.21. There, my brother, there, my sister, there, my mother, who hear the word of God and do it. If we don't do what the Lord says, we're denying him. We're denying him. Hey? We are denying the Lord. <clears throat> we are like those who have... We better read it. Let's go to Timothy, please. Hallelujah. To Timothy. We are no better than them. To Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, we're in the last days. This is our message, it's about the last days. We're in the last days. We're in the last hour. Little children, it is the last hour. And Antichrist is coming and they've already gone out. They're anti-truth. They're anti-judgment. Don't judge. Who are you to judge? Once saved, always saved is anti-truth. It's against the doctrine of Jesus. Because Jesus' doctrine says you can forfeit your salvation. Anti is against. And if we do not speak, we consent, don't we? I have to speak. I believe, therefore, I speak. It's anti. It's not the truth. There's no lie in the truth. No lie is of the truth. Let's read it. 2 Timothy 3, 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But notice that in the last days, perilous, troublesome, terrible times will come. And now he describes the type of peril. Men and women will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Boasting, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despising good, despising good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now here it is. But they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of of godliness. Come on. Come on, listen. We gotta go beyond we gotta go beyond religion. We gotta go beyond little translations of men from Bible colleges. We gotta get into the Holy Spirit. Let him lead us and guide us because he knows all things. Hey? Having a form of godliness and deny the power of of godliness. Turn away from such people. Oh no, it's all inclusive. We're all together, you know. <laughs> Jesus is inclusive. <laughs> Let's all do the Santy dance together. <laughs> Put our red, red hats on. It's for a good cause, you know. It's all about raising money, raising money, raising... 
good deeds won't save your soul, friend. You, you can raise a billion dollars an hour for uh, the spastic or, or, or the tuberculosis sufferers and Jesus will just say, what? He said, hang on, you come to me, you didn't even call me Lord. At least those hypocrites call me Lord. Go away from me. I don't want to know you. My message on the street during the week was, if you don't want to know Jesus now, he don't want to know you at the judgment stand. And then I said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for them who dare believe. Stand up, Brother Shadrach, please. Stand up there for a minute. Just look at that shirt. He's not ashamed of Jesus. Sit down, please. Sister Hannah, look at that shirt. Man, when you hot, you hot. When you not, you not. I'm not ashamed. You get me a, a $193 Nike shirt and then you put my ministry shirt beside it, I wouldn't even look at the Nike shirt. I just put the ministry shirt on. Say, <laughs> bring it on. I'm dressed to kill all lives with the sword of the Spirit. Someone say, Amen. They are not of us. We're talking about apostasy here today. Hey? Apostasy. They went out from us because they were not of us. I love the word continuance. I love the word consistent. I love the word ongoing. Hey? I love those sort of words because that's the proof in the pudding. Not some flash in the pan for five years. That don't mean nothing to me. you got to get over a couple of decades before you impress me. Oh, well, I handed out literature on the street for two weeks, you know. Did someone say something? <laughs> what? That don't mean nothing. Well, I done letterboxing. I, 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 I distribute, uh, you know, thousand brochures in one day. And what are you doing today? Oh, I'm selling mobile phones. That don't mean nothing to me. How could it mean anything to the Lord? Consistency, ongoing, continuance. Totally the opposite of one saved, always saved. Say a prayer, sit in a chair, get water baptised and go to heaven. Hogwash. If you come to the Lord and you repent and you turn to the Lord and, and whether you're water baptised or not and you die within the hour, sure. God looks at the heart to see one more last check. Was it genuine? Yes. That's why the Lord accepted his repentance. They go to heaven, I believe. But this last chance bit, the Roman Catholic reading the last rites, and they, oh well, i got nothing else left. I've got 15 minutes to live. Might as well turn to that flea bag Jesus. He might be able to do something for me, you know what I mean? Might be able to knock up a quick lean-to in heaven or something. <laughs> there might be a mansion waiting for me there. Are you sure you're going to heaven? Is that what it's about? It's still about you, isn't it? It's still about you. If that's your words. I've heard ministers say, it, leading people astray. Are you sure you're going to heaven? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Probably. They would. Who wrote the brochure? Because <laughs> they've led the people astray. It's not about going to heaven. It's not about getting rich financially, materially. It's not about getting people to like you. A lot more people like me now. I don't know if you're saved, if that's the case. A lot more people hate me. <laughs> I have more mates than hairs in my head. 
I got a decent header here. Now, <laughs> you can set up a tent around me. <laughs> no one will be bruised. Right? Paul considered all things lost that he may know Jesus. He really wanted to know him, you know. Death, burial, and resurrection. Power of his resurrection. If by a if if by any means he may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Not the damnation. If we're also cocksure, aren't we? We've done a few good deeds, help the old deer across the road, and pump someone's tire up, I'm going to heaven. Wake up. I hit a few sixes in cricket. I caught three Indians out. I'm going to heaven. I have made three tries with the Broncos. I'm off to heaven too. Hey? Died of an overdose. I don't believe so. If you want to listen to Grandma, maybe, but <laughs> if you if you want to read the Bible and have to see what it says, I tell you what, it's going to just smash your life. Your whole thinking process will just collapse when when we get the truth in the Word. Can someone say Amen? We should, I think we should change the title to the truth in the Word. You reckon? Because I haven't really touched on a lot of the apostate areas I wanted to touch on. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Hey, the brethren, I, I come to you in a kind manner and ask you that you would give your lives a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Reasonable sermons. And do you no longer conform to this world? And we know that Christmas is of the world. Hey? And we know that the church is conformed to it. And they're conforming out there now to all things of the world. All things worldly. Hey? Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. And how then will you apostate I? There has to be a great falling away, the Lord says in Thessalonians. There's a great falling away. It's happening now. They're falling away by the millions to garbage devil's doctrine. Every Sunday they go to some fancy building and they look at it and they think this is it because they're looking with their eyes and not with their ears and they're being date raped and spiked. The, the rubbish doctrine they're getting has made them lethargic, has made them lukewarm, has made them world lovers and has made them friends of the devil rather than disciples of Jesus the Christ, non-conformers and people who are separated from the world unto Christ, their true husband. Christmas. You're going to live a lot like Christmas. Credit cards in every room. The Lord's not for people getting themselves into debt. That's against his word. He said, Oh no man, nothing but the love that is in you. And the love that is in me manifests through preaching, teaching, proclaiming, writing the truth. Because the love is of the truth. And that's what they denied and rejected. And they were of God too. Let's read it and we'll finish up. In Timothy, they were of the truth too. But they 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 chose not. Can someone say amen? They chose not to go on in the truth. Well, 
We're in 2 Timothy. I'm going to read that further. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 3. The time will come when they will no longer endure sound, biblical, Christos doctrine. But according to their own desires for Christmas parties, giving each other presents, Easter parades, according to their own desires for presents. Because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves their own teachers. There will be heaps of them. And they will turn their ears away from the true prophet True prophets have the truth. And be turned aside to fables. You're listening. Hey? You like that? Now let's have a look at the denial scripture. And then we'll finish, I promise. We really will. 2 Thessalonians 2. I don't want to. I want to stay here for another couple of hours yet. <laughs> hey? Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles I give. They still happen now and then. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness, in the, those things that are not right. It's got to be right. Unrighteousness. They took pleasure in things that were not right. Is it right? Is our life right with God? 1 John 1 9. If we repent and turn from our sin and we confess our sin, it's a righteous thing with God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and place us in right standing with Father. They are not of us. They have gone out from us willfully. But they were there. They were there. Okay? Right? They've gone out from us. We do have people. Even, oh, look, I'm going to finish up now. In 2 Timothy 1, can we go there please? And then we'll finish up. 2 Timothy 1. And the verse is 14. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Who dwells in us. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from Paul. Among whom were Phagelius and Homogenes. The Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of the message that I brought. For Gilles and Hermogenes with the whole of Asia. You do a study on Philegus and Hermogenes, they were born again teachers of the word turned away from the truth. We don't want to deny the Lord. It's antichrist to deny the word and say, oh, no, 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 that, uh, that's not the truth. That's denying the Lord. How can Father and Jesus dwell in that one? You know, when Father and Jesus isn't dwelling in someone, they're not content. They're incomplete. They're still looking for something 
or someone. But we got the great one in us. We got Father. We got Jesus. We got the Holy Ghost. We're not looking anymore. The chase has called off. We're ready to be married. I'm getting married in the rapture. Ding dong, the bells are ringing high. We already have a husband. Right? Did you know women? Women are made women are made complete in themselves as men are. But there are some women that don't feel complete unless they're married. But I have a sister, she's not married. She's a lovely woman. And she's complained. She loves Jesus. She loves the truth. She's very generous. She's very kind and loving. She's helped many people. But unknown. She's unknown. But known. Unknown in the earth. But known in heaven. <laughs> but she's complete. Well, that's like we are. With Jesus, we're complete. We have it all there. Right? They went out from us. Because they're not of us. Now, there's one thing I'm going to ask you to do. All of you and everyone listening. When I say they went out from us, you there be the Pharisees and critics of mine, and I have many detractors, and they'd say, Oh, who are you? Did people go out from you? Well... I'm going to ask a very simple question to all listeners and even the immediate congregation. You go home today and you sit down and, and you can even pull up my website or pull up my YouTube or Facebook and look at it as a whole. I have three computers there. And, and, and while you have that, you have one of my discs going in the background and you ask yourself, you, what sort of person would walk away from this message? <laughs> you ask yourself. What sort of person would not want to sit as much as they could under this message? And I'll tell you who. A person who doesn't want the unadulterated truth but they don't mind a look alike can someone say amen, amen. so I'll have a message today they are not of us